Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new semester. Uh, it's good to see quite a few familiar faces. Uh, uh, so this semester uh, uh, is an interesting one. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about urban church planting. And uh, the notes are available uh, on the stream. So if you'd like, you can feel free to download those notes. And even as we continue to go through the entire course, you can you know, uh, track along with us. Right. So. Uh, even before we begin, uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Let's just sum submit this entire course uh, into God's hand, and let's pray that God ministers to us even as we learn together. Now, let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this time. We thank you for this course that you have enabled us to study together, O oh God, and even as we learn about urban church planting and the various aspects in church planting of God, we we pray, God, that you will empower us, you will guide us. We pray for your wisdom to lead us, oh God, no matter which sphere of influence we are in, oh God, that we will be able to build your kingdom here on earth, oh God. And we thank you for your word that has promised us that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Lord, we just submit each one of us, our, our, our students, and, uh, and and Lord, the entire study of this course into your hands. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, urban church planting, uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, mostly urban churches right again uh, before i start uh, if you have questions feel free to you know just stop me you can uh, ask your questions or you can also uh, post the questions in the chat and we'll uh, try and uh, you know answer those questions as well right so urban church planting now when we talk about church planting uh, i'm sure many of us uh, you know, may have different thoughts when it comes to church planting because see, none of us have the same ideas. God has designed us in a way, uh, uh, right? We all have different ideas. God, the Holy Spirit is not limited to a certain idea. He can, he can use different ideas, different strategies, different plans, uh, and different people uh, to build his church. But what we're going to do in this semester is we're going to talk about some guidelines that we can use when it comes to church planting. Uh, now, some of us may be in cities, some of them, some of us may be in towns or even, you know, in uh, villages where there's not much of uh, the things that we're going to talk about, not much of urban life. But uh, just a quick overview, right? 54% uh, of the world's population right now is moving from a place of rural living into urban living 54 percent of the world that's more than half the world half the population uh, so if you look at you know the the growth that is happening across the entire globe uh, uh, let me just take our nation of india for an example right so we've got more than 20 percent of you know villages moving becoming towns how is that? Because what's happening is uh, COVID, again, uh, because of COVID, things going online has helped boost usage of internet. So you got the regular farmers who know how to use the internet. You got regular, you know, day-to-day -day vendors who know how to use, uh, you know, go online, book uh, cabs or book hotel rooms. They, they can do everything. Why? Because this whole thing of rural living has moved and things are getting into an urban setting. Life is changing, right? Uh, and predicted that over the next maybe or 10 years or more, the, this, this uh, statistics is going to increase even more. So you may say, hey, I'm in a town. I can't apply all these uh, you know, strategies to build a church. Uh, but uh, be, uh, you know, you, one thing that we can understand is that, hey, towns are going to become cities soon, right? And look at this, for example, right? Um, 
five years down the line, we never knew that online, you know, we could attend online services and experience almost the same experience of being in a church, right? Uh, we never knew that we could have Zoom meetings across the entire globe. Uh, people can join from anywhere, join you Zoom meetings, right? So we see that the world is getting urbanized. And as a church, as a body of Christ, we must move along with what the, what what is happening around us. Right now, there are other reasons why people would also move from rural settings to urban settings. Uh, I'll just name a couple of them. One could be because of uh, better living standards, right? Uh, better uh, facilities. Two could be better educational facilities, right? So you've got people who are, um, you know, who are studying who want to come and study in better schools, better colleges, so they move, relocate, come to urban settings, right? And three is those who are working professionals, right? They have better opportunities, better doors, better pays, better, better, uh, you know, everything is better in the urban sector, right? So we see that there's this constant transition from the rural to the urban, right? So even as we study this course, uh, we're going to look at part one. We're going to look at the introduction on what is the dynamics of a church, right? Or the dynamics of urban settings. So I, I remember, I always say this, you know, I remember a teacher who used to say this, a, a, a good believer is one who holds God's word in one hand and God's world in another hand. So we must be able to uh, maintain and strike a good balance, right? And that we know what is happening around us, right? So we're talking about uh, the Holy Spirit, who's our leader, right? Uh, what is the objective of church planting? Uh, then uh, God's heart for cities, uh, dynamics of uh, urban settings, natural dynamics, spiritual dynamics. Now, I'm sure we all know that uh, you know, strategies that work in the cities and urban settings may not work in towns and villages. So we may need to, uh, you know, uh, tweak it accordingly. Then urban church planting and missions that we see in the book of Acts. Right. So that will be section one. Section two, practical aspects. Section three will be spiritual aspects. Right. Uh, so are we ready to start this course? Right. Do you have any questions? OK, so this course will be divided into uh, two portions, like what we always do. Portion one will be for the midterm until where we cover. So you'll have a midterm test, and then you'll have a final assessment right, towards the end of the semester. All right, so let's look at the introduction. Uh, uh, so Pastor has just mentioned uh, his personal journey of how uh, he was able to pioneer uh, All People's Church and how it came about, right? So. Uh, early 1980s, grade 9 to grade 12, he was uh, going to schools and colleges, preaching the gospel. 89 onwards, he he was doing his bachelor's degree in a certain place called Manipal. There he started a, a believer's fellowship. Um, and that again grew, grew to about 200, 250. What started with about two or three grew very quickly. And in 1990 to 2000, he started the pioneered the International Students Bible Study Fellowship, uh, led in church planning teams in the English and Hispanic uh, churches in uh, New Jersey, and he also served in uh, small churches. Then in 2001 was when uh, APC as a church was planted, uh, pioneered APC while he was still running his own business. Uh, then served full time, started serving full time from 2014 uh, with the church. Uh, so, as a church, what did we do? We started off in the city, we started with one church, and slowly we were able to branch out. So, right now, if you look at uh, uh, APC as an organization, we have in Bangalore, we have five churches, five English churches. 
Well, and we call them north, south, east, and west. It's basically the directions, right? So north, south, east, west, and you have a central church. So if you've seen the recordings of our services, that's the main church. And out of that were planted these other churches. And that were, they all were pioneered uh, over time. They were started over time, right? Um, then what happened was in 2005, we started our Bible college. And so students started coming and studying in the Bible college and they would go back to their hometowns. And then uh, they were encouraged to start churches in their settings. So uh, in that way, we were able to start churches in Bangalore and across our nation. And looking forward, we are also looking to you know, start churches, many more churches, not only in Bangalore, but also in different states in our nation. And we're also coming up with world missions uh, where we want to plant churches across the world, right? So that's something that we are constantly praying and thinking about as well. So much of what we have put in this book uh, is things that we've learned over time. Uh, you know, some things did work, a lot of them worked, a lot of them didn't work, right? So we put down all of it so that we can all learn together, right? Uh, so if anyone over here, uh, you know, those who are online here, you feel that, hey, uh, I'm not called to start a church, right? I'm just a, you know, a housewife or I'm just a working professional. Uh, I want to encourage you, these principles that we are learning can also be used for a life group setting, a small group setting. You can also start a, 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 a you know, a, a, a prayer group, and you can do small things. Like you never know how God can, you know. I love that verse. Never despise meager beginnings, right? Uh, we may we may think it's very small, but God can do big things about it, right? So we can use these principles wherever we are, in our workplace, uh, at home, and God can you know, continue to empower us to be a blessing to the body of Christ, right? So let's look at the beginning of this. Uh, uh, would you want me to pre present the notes? Would it be easier for you that way, or, uh, or is it OK this way? Uh, I hope you're able to. Uh, track along with the notes, but let me know if you want me to present the notes. Uh, I can do that. Uh, right. Yeah, you can let me know anytime, right? So for now, we'll just start with uh, the Holy Spirit, our leader. Let's read Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. Yes, any one of us can read Acts chapter 1. And we're saved. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Right. Thank you, Rosalind. So uh, we have mentioned this many times. The Lord Jesus is doing an important work now. He's finished his task. He's done what God the Father has asked him to do. And he tells the 120 people who are waiting in the upper room, 1 verse 8, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you will be my witnesses. Right? So the Holy Spirit is our leader. The Holy Spirit is our strength. The Holy Spirit, of course, we learned the entire course in Holy Spirit, is our guide. He will enable us to the task that we have. So when we talk about planting a ministry or pioneering a ministry, pioneering a, a small group or being an evangelist, whatever we want to do for God's kingdom, Remember, the Holy Spirit must be our leader. That which is born of the flesh will produce flesh. That which is born of the spirit will produce the spirit. Right? So Jesus is reminding the believers, see, you can do 
the church you can build the church you can start off but for that you got to wait that the power of the holy spirit come upon you and only then you will be able to be a witness for god's kingdom right so that's interesting you and i if god has put something in your heart first go back to god get the foundations right go back pray ask the holy spirit how when where and he will speak to us he will lead us over time now uh, uh, the mistake that sometimes we we may make is we may think hey um, you know holy spirit is not saying anything so i'll do whatever i want you know i i will start it off right or we may end up being in a hurry now that that can cause confusion that can cause a delay right uh, and so we don't want to do that we want to be led by the holy spirit being sensitive to the holy spirit zechariah 4 6 and 7 uh, this is a wonderful verse let's read this verse zechariah 4 verse 6 through 7 yes go ahead anyone can read zechariah 4 verse 6 and 7 so he answered and said to me this is the word of the lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. So we see here, it, it's very interesting when you read this, you know, uh, see, Zerubbabel, has has a task he's got to build a temple now right and so god is speaking through the prophet zechariah and he's saying zerubbabel is fearful being a king he's saying now if i build this temple again the enemies are going to come and cause trouble they're going to destroy it they're going to destroy us it's not going to happen we cannot do it so God speaks to Prophet Zerubbabel through Zechariah and says, Zerubbabel, it's not by might, it's not by power, it is by the Holy Spirit that you will build the temple. So did he go on to build it? Yes, he did. it. So God is very clearly saying, it is not our might, it is not our strength, it is not our wisdom, it is not our talents. It is not our gifts. All these are channels that God can use. But it is by the Holy Spirit. So our first dependence on everything must be the Holy Spirit. Our dependence is on God. And unless He builds, our efforts will be in vain. Right? Can you believe this? Imagine we start something of the flesh. No, God can make it grow. I mean, it can grow, right? You can start a church, it can grow. But imagine if it's of the flesh. What will happen? It will disintegrate. There will be no fruit. Bible tell, The Lord Jesus says, you shall be known by your fruit. Fruit is something that is long-lasting. Right? Psalms 127 and verse 1. Uh, somebody can open to John 15, 4 and 5 as well. Psalms 127, verse 1. All right. Psalms 127, verse 1. Okay, I'll read it. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders build it in vain. And this is such a powerful verse. Right? Uh, unless the Lord builds it. If we are trying to build something, we are building it in vain. Right? John 15, 4 and 5. Yes. Would anyone like to read that? John chapter 
abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abide in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Right, thank you. So, Jesus here is saying, you abide in me, rest in me. Because he ends that whole passage by saying, without me, you can do nothing. Right? That's a strong statement, right? Without me, you can do nothing. So when you think about a church or you think about some a ministry that you want to do, Jesus is saying, abide in me and I will abide in you. And when you abide in me, you will bear fruit. But if you don't abide in me, there will be no fruit. And without me, you cannot do anything. So the picture painted is very clear. It is God who is the center, and it is God who decides. It is God who orchestrates and handles things in the church. Right? So nowhere, you know, we may look at what is happening around us. There may be persecution. You know, the enemy can come burn down churches. The, the persecution may increase. Things may happen. But who's in control? It is the Lord Jesus. Because without him, we can do nothing. First Corinthians, again, is a wonderful, wonderful example. He says, uh, it talks about labor, one sows, another man waters, another man reaps. But all increase comes from God. We labor, right? but the increase comes from God. Now, if you want to start a ministry, there are things that we have to do. Right, we have to go. We have to reach out to the people. We have to do the practical things that are involved. We have to labor. We have to labor in prayer. We have to ask God. We have to pray for the surrounding areas. We have to pray for the city, for the nation. Pray for leaders. Pray for families. We've got to do all the laboring. When we labor, God increases. God. All increase comes from God. We can never come to a place and say, because I prayed to us, that's why the church grew. Or because I prayed for, uh, did 21 days of fasting and prayer, so the church grew. No. Right? It's very easy for us to say that. Or, is it, or because of my anointing, the church grew. No. God increases the church. We labor, God increases. Now, how he increases, it's up to him. Right? But it's, it's not like God is favoring, okay, I'll give these people 20,000 and I'll give these people uh, 200. It's not that God is favoring. And it's not that we are not laboring. We may be laboring, you know, but, but that's what God has ordained for us. Right? We be faithful in that. Eternal fruit can only be gathered by engaging in eternal means. Right. Let's read 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 12, sorry, chapter 3, verse 12 through 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Thank you, Javina. Right. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul is uh, bringing a picture of the judgment seat of Christ when we will all stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ. And he says, he brings out this whole, he's like painting a picture to the believers. He's saying, you can build with gold, silver, or precious stones. And this is what is building with, a building that comes from God. Then you got wood, hay, and stubble. And he goes on to explain, and all of this will be tested by fire. Right. So precious stones, gold, silver, precious stones, doesn't lose its value. But wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn down and ashes. So basically, 
is talking about eternal fruit. We can do many things. People may recognize us and say, oh, wow, you did a wonderful job. But if it is not done in eternal purposes, when God tests it by fire, it's going to be ashes. We'll not be rewarded for that. Right now, it does not mean that we don't, you know, use practical methods. Right? We, we can't say, OK, Instagram is carnal method. God will test it by fire. It's, it'll burn down. No. Right. So there are different methods. We know that we are living in a time where uh, digital marketing is definitely a place where we can, as a church, we can reach out. Right. So all of these are methods that we're going to use. Right. So we have uh, like as a church, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have YouTube, we have uh, a church website, we have digital uh, uh, marketing platforms that we're also going to start new ones. So there's there's so much that's happening. Now then you got uh, we've got other programs that we do like worship evenings. We do uh, fellowship uh, lunch or uh, there's so many other things. Now doesn't mean that they are carnal. Doesn't mean they're like wood hay and stubble hay. It's nothing spiritual about it. No. So we must understand that we are not depending on those methods for church growth. We are using the tools. We are using Instagram, Facebook, all of these social media and all the other methods, but we're not depending on it. Right? We are not depending on these for success. We are being good stewards of what God has given us. We are laboring, but we must also strike the balance that God, it is you who will build the church. I hope we are understanding this, right? Everyone with me? Right. So it's nothing wrong to use these mediums or these, uh, you know, these different methods of reaching out to people. The moment I think to myself, OK, uh, Facebook or Instagram, oh, man, uh, why is nobody coming from here? Why I, I spend so much money? I, I did uh, digital promotions for six months. Nothing has happened. If I'm only thinking of that, then there's something wrong. Because I'm not depending on the Holy Spirit. Rather, our, our strategy should be, God, we are going to do this. Right? We are going to post um, probably an event on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, Lord, we are going to uh, do a worship evening. Lord, you let this to reach people. And Holy Spirit, you speak to people's heart that they would, and you will bring them and come. Now, this, is, this would be the right way to deal with it. So... You're using the tools, you're using technology, you're using everything, natural means, but your dependence is on the Holy Spirit. Right? So recently, uh, just to share this, recently we had a worship evening in one of our church locations, and um, we did newspaper inserts. Uh, about, I think it was uh, 3,000 newspaper inserts. So the, the worship evening, uh, you know, the uh, the details would go into newspapers, which reaches the apartments of about uh, three thousand odd houses. Right now, during the worship evening, nobody, no, none of them came who had received the newspaper inserts. It went to three thousand, not when it was not like thousand people came out of the three thousand. No, but what happened was, it, it's not like we used carnal methods. We prayed. But what happened was there was two, three couples who came to church. They said, we received these uh, invites. So they came with the invitation. They came to church. They were very happy. And they, were, they, they said, OK, we will also. They got to know that the church is close by. So was it a carnal method? No. We, we did what we had to do. We prayed God, the Holy Spirit, led people to come. So the the so it requires wisdom to take a city. It requires wisdom. Let's read Proverbs twenty one twenty two. Proverbs twenty one and twenty two. Go ahead. Anyone can read. Yeah. 
Proverbs 21 and 22, a wild man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. Mm. A wise man brings down, says so the wise man attacks the city of the mighty and pulls down the strongholds in that place. Right? So when you and I are, you know, God is calling us to minister to a certain city or to pioneer a ministry. We need the wisdom of God. You know, the wisdom of God will enable us to make the right decisions in the right way. Right? Especially now with all that is happening around us, there's, uh, you know, especially in our nation, the nation of India, where, uh, you know, we have the anti-conversion bill, we have things coming up, there's a lot of persecution, different places, uh, different states of our nation, uh, and we are a minority in our nation. So we need the wisdom of God to reach a city. We cannot do it through carnal means. Uh, right, uh, because the carnal methods can only take us to a certain place, and then what is going to happen is we will tire out, we will stress ourselves, we will get burnt out, meaning we will get so tired, we become weary, and we are not seeing results. We say, God, what is happening? It's a natural thing, right? Because we worked so hard, and we don't see results, but when we work hard. Trust in God, depend on the Holy Spirit. You're free. You're not in a place of, you know, I, you know, uh, because uh, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. That's why the church is this way. You're free. You're free to serve the people. You're free to minister to the people. Right? So, just a question here What are some of the challenges we struggle with in learning to do both listen and depend on the Holy Spirit? What are some of the challenges? Uh, as well as research, observe, strategize, and with wisdom, execute a church plant or a ministry. So maybe I'll just leave this time open. What are some of the challenges uh, we struggle in terms of listening and depending on the Holy Spirit? Uh, maybe uh, one or two of you can share your thoughts. Uh, what are some of the challenges you face? Now, it's not to you know uh, embarrass you or to make fun of it but uh it is just so that we can all learn together right so maybe two of you can share then i can share uh maybe one one aspect as well anyone would like to share what are some of the challenges you faced uh, when it comes to learning to do both listen and depend on the holy spirit okay so she says a hectic schedule yes very true um, hectic schedule where says you know you don't have time to you know just wait upon the lord it may take hours and hours or months years together then we got our work that we have to do a hectic schedule anyone else would like to share challenges in learning to do both listening and depending on the holy spirit as well as research observe strategize and with wisdom, uh, initiate a church plan. Okay, Jeffina says, when you listen to others' judgment on how you handle the ministry. Uh, Jeffina, can you uh, can you just explain, like, uh, what, what, uh, how how do you feel that? Uh, I think sometimes we listen to people. We uh, kind of want them to love how we do the ministry and want them to understand that we are doing it for God. But uh, I have seen not every time people get it. Uh, sometimes they feel like uh, we are doing something wrong, but we are kind of sure we are listening to the Holy Spirit. We are kind of sure. Uh, like how the Bible says, not the way doesn't look like highway. Sometimes it's a good path and not everyone will like a good path. Uh, so I felt it like, even though I feel like uh, this is the right choice, I'm doing it for God. Some people, they just don't accept it. Uh, they feel like you could have did it better. You could have did it the other way. You have these talents, you have these opportunities. But I think God doesn't want a grand way always. He just wants us to obey, even if it's little. 
So when we listen to them, we sometimes struggle to listen to the Holy Spirit. That's what I felt. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, when we listen to others' opinions, uh, it basically overpowers uh, the voice or the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you. Uh, John says, uh, so many opinions around, yes. Uh, uh, now, uh, so John, there's also the opinions where, you know, there are good opinions, there are good advice as well. And then there is the uh, opinions that can, uh, you know, either encourage or discourage, right? So that's good. When we try to do everything ourselves, oh, yes, so true, so true. Um, yeah, uh, we try to do everything ourselves. Yeah, very true. Um, maybe I'll share one, oh, and it's still open to others. You can also share. I think one, one, uh, one, one of the challenges for me was, uh, you know, being in a hurry, you know, not waiting at the right time. Uh, you know, just being in a hurry. I said, God, okay, you put this in my heart. I know it's the Lord, but you know, I didn't discern the time. The timing right uh, i know it's god i know that god has spoken to me i know that he's giving me the push but i didn't hear from him when i know the how right he has ministered he has spoken to me but i don't know when so i've done it in a hurry and it led to you know i said there were there were challenges because of that right so sometimes it's also god speaks but you got to understand how to read god's timing read god's clock and know what how to read his calendar as well yeah so that was uh one of the challenges that i had struggled with yeah uh, jafina says comparing and feeling you're not doing it but oh comparing yes yeah yeah comparing also yes right when your ministry for god becomes a priority than having a relationship with God. Yes, very true. Now, how many of us have gone through this? When your ministry for God becomes a priority than having a relationship with God, uh, it leads us to a place of self. Right? Uh, and now sometimes we may feel, okay, this I'm doing ministry for God. I'm doing God's work. I'm doing God's ministry. But then we're not able to spend time with God to hear about the ministry. Now, for example, you, you know, somebody wants to start a church. So when we start off, we are always praying. We're always seeking God. We're seeking his guidance. And then the church grows, the ministry grows. And then there are a lot of, you know, a lot of people have joined the church. Then the workload increases as pastors or leaders, you become busy. And we sometimes, you know, we compromise, I would say, by saying that, okay, if since I'm doing ministry for God, I don't have to spend two hours in God's presence. It's counted. It comes under that bracket. Or a counseling session may come under the bracket of uh, uh, ministry. Yes, it's true. But when the priority is ministry and not a relationship, it will it will cause damages right so god what will happen is we may end up taking the wrong step and uh, rosalind says when we are not being supported by our elders and our pastors right it can overpower us it, our mind gets confused we feel why is this happening so yeah all 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 answers are true all answers and the the learning is that you and i as believers we must learn to both listen and depend on the holy spirit right so anyone else would like to share or should we just go to the next portion and okay, anyway have a good 10 minutes okay let's go to the next portion definition and objectives of church planting now matthew 28 18 through 20. Um, common common verse let's read that matthew 28 18 through 20. this is the last words of the lord jesus before he ascended into heaven matthew 28 
18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Yep. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So it says here that then Jesus came to them and said, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you go and preach the gospel, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and be obedient to the Holy Spirit. So the Lord Jesus is giving the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. And so that is what the church is. The church is very less a building, and I'm sure all of us know this. It's not a, it's not a physical structure, but you and I are the church. When we see in the book of Acts, uh, we see how the church unfolds, right? When God gives a great commission, it is so wonderful to see the establishing of, of community of believers. The book of Acts, if we see the first uh, sermon preached by Peter, right? Peter preaches the first sermon in Acts chapter 2. Uh, he addresses the crowd and then there was 3,000 people who were added to the church. So they became a community of believers, right? And what happened? It was a church plant at that moment, the church in Jerusalem, right? And in villages, towns, and cities, they went proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the church is meant, it, it, it is a community of believers that are, in one heart, in one mind. And here it says that they went out proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was in these self-sustaining communities of, be of believers that disciples, disciples were nurtured and equipped to make more disciples. Right? That's what happened. And you see the book of Acts, the church 3000 was added into the church in Jerusalem persecution arose people went across to different portions different places some went into samaria some went to antioch in antioch the church was started again a, a, a church that was started there were believers added to the church there were prophets apostles uh, there were great miracles happening in the church again from there paul and barnabas go there minister there from there they sent out apostles to different places and you see the church the community of believers just going out, reaching out, starting new churches. So a church plant is the establishing of a self-sustaining community of believers who are growing together as disciples of Christ. A self-sustaining community of believers. That's what a church is. It could be two, it could be three, it could be 5,000. Right? It's a church, a self-sustaining community of believers who are growing together as disciples of Jesus Christ, hosting God's presence, influencing their city so that others may come to know about Jesus and be nurtured as disciples. That is what the church is. Right? So when we look at church planting, this should be in our mind. Right? It should not it should not be okay. I wish you know one all this is part and parcel, right? But it should the, the main intention should not be okay, one day I'll have it's good to have a vision, it's good to think uh, big, right? Uh, but that is not the focus. Oh, one day I'll have a stage with stage lights and this whole band on the stage, and I'll be preaching and be ten thousand people sitting here. That's good. I'm not against it, but what does it say here? A, a church is a self-sustaining community of believers for what? For growing and discipling each other in the Lord, to be to influence their city, to influence their region, and to nurture people into uh, from being just believers, mature. Uh, sorry, from being babies in Christ to making them mature in Christ. What does it What does it mean to be self-sustaining? Self-sustaining is basically 
involves leadership, right? In the church, leadership is important. Imagine a church with no leader. What is going to happen? It's chaos. To make one decision, 10 people should come. Now, all 10 people will have all 10 different opinions. When will the decision be made? Now, leadership is important. Strong leadership. Two, a self-sustaining church is a church that is able to sustain itself financially. I want to say this. A church, we are doing God's work. We need money. Obviously, we cannot do ministry without money. Right? We need money for everything. Right. And financially, God will bring us to a place. Initially, right, when if it's a church plan, obviously we cannot do big things, we cannot think of big things. But as we are growing, we we become a self-sustaining body of Christ. And then we become a community. Now it takes time for a community of believers, that is a church plant, to become self-sustaining. But we must work towards it, right? Uh, uh, so, for example, you start a church, you start a ministry. Uh, let's say you start a church, right? And this church is five people. The vision should be: Hey, one day in this church, I will have good leaders who can lead different areas of ministry. To one day we will have funds to support ourselves to do various events, conferences, and to reach out to people across our city and our nation. Three is we will be a community. We will be there for one another to support and strengthen one another. Now, all of these three things may take time. It may take two years. It may take five years. But again, it depends on the pioneer. right? It depends on how we as pioneers are leading the ministry. Are we raising up the right leaders? Are we integ showing integrity in our finances? Are we building a community, of uh, a sense of oneness among the church? So all of this depends on the pioneer. That's you and I we're, when we're leading the church. What are the objectives? And we'll just close quickly. Uh, some of the objectives of in planting local churches is to establish and host the presence of God, to disciple new believers, and influence the region, and multiply and grow to become more, more and more churches to be established. Right. So we've completed chapter one and two today. Um, we as we go forward, we we'll, it starts getting more interesting. We'll start. We'll dive deep into. Uh, the other aspects in church planting. So, uh, so we'll stop here uh, and we will catch up. Uh, I think our next class, we have two hours uh, in the week for urban church planting. So I think we'll catch up for the next class and start off with uh, chapter four, which is God's heart for the cities. Right. Thank you so much. Have a great day ahead. God bless you all. So if you have any questions as well, we can answer that next week. Right. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. God bless.